this one is particularly in just interesting as uh, as we know crypto is quite a hot topic at the moment so joining me on this panel we do have Shelly over from mode global holdings a little bit of an introduction so Shelly is an unconventional compliance thought leader who has worked with the financial services space ranging from banking to payments for nearly three decades most recently at the helm of the crypto sphere a passionate educator mentor and full of commercial news Shelly advises a number of crypto institutions on the site. So Shelly, on that note, I have a few questions for you that I'd love to jump into with number one being, what is the compliances function's role in making crypto and the crypto industry credible? Yeah, thanks, Claudia. Um, so the role of compliance is it's a hallmark of quality. It allows consumers the confidence to build trust and understanding. And it also allows firms to understand what good looks like and the need to demonstrate over a sustained period, credibility in meeting the standards expected from financial service firms. So compliance's role is to help with the evolution. Understood. And the, so the evolution and to elaborate a little bit on that, you know, we're hearing a lot about how, especially in the UK right now, uh, there, there, there will soon be plans to reveal, you know, a more regulated cryptocurrency market. What do you think companies should be on the lookout for? Just to elaborate a little bit more on that question in regards to um, what to expect or what are your thoughts on what's upcoming? Um, I don't think there are ever any surprises. Um, because there is consultation between industry and regulators. And I'm very grateful that consultation takes place. I'm not sure how much um, of an impact it's going to have um, in our current situations. But I, I think that um, the, the developments we're gonna see will be around the travel rule, around the strengthening of AML protections, um, we're going to see potentially some divergence in how um, countries can deal with each other, in particular with Brexit in mind there as well, and what's going to happen between the Frankfurt and London financial hubs for that. And mm. I think we're going to see new regulation that is just for crypto and not for other financial services, because trying to get one size to fit all isn't having great results right now. Agreed. Agreed. And that's a perfect kind of segue into the second question in regards to how do you keep up with the ongoing and the numerous regulations around crypto right now? Um, personally, reading, reading, reading. Okay. Um, corporately, we have people who this is their job. There is so much going on in the crypto sphere that you cannot keep up and hold down a full time job at the same time. And all you need to do is keep up enough with a LinkedIn feed, joining a few discords, understanding a few projects, going to some crypto geek meetups and meeting people face to face. I'm on WhatsApp groups of people who get excited at crypto news and um, obviously taking courses. And when you've taken enough courses, you get to write the courses and participate in the, delivering them. Excellent. And sidebar for everyone watching, if you're not following Shelly on LinkedIn, please absolutely do. Lots of great posting, lots of great insights. So just on that side note, in terms of education and being uh, informed and just staying up to date, definitely someone I'd recommend I'd recommend following there. Um, kind of segmenting into to my third part. And what is your organization doing to mitigate risks associated with crypto? Okay, so mode has gone the absolutely legit role whole hog. So we're not just registered as a crypto asset firm with the FCA, and we have an EMI license to boot. Um, we're also listed on the London Stock Exchange, which means that we have very firm and clear guidance on risk management. And as a grown up firm, risk management is at the core of what we do. So the risks associated with crypto are the same as risks associated with financial services companies, tech companies, it's the IT security, it's the data security. But for us, more than that, we want to reduce the customer risk. And we're addressing that by having a very vanilla risk profile, 
for our customers. So we know who it is who we're dealing with, so we can be more confident. And um, also ensuring that education is as much a part of the customer journey as it is, you know, if we're not comfortable that our customers know what they're doing, we wouldn't possibly be able to allow them to do it. And one thing we did, which I'm particularly happy about, because it's all worked out really useful, is um, I got my firm to adopt the financial promotions regime principles when no one was doing that. And I thought, well, rather than write our own framework, here's a framework that the FCA is already familiar with, and it feels right for crypto because we've got the same objectives for our customers. Yeah. And so we adopted that. And then there's been all this noise around financial promotions and being clear, fair, and not misleading. So that was one we got right by mitigating risk in advance of being forced to do it. And I, yeah, that's how we're mitigating risk. Taking a more proactive approach in this case, as For opposed sure. to, yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. awesome. Awesome. And then as, as you've implemented that through the organization, kind of dovetailing into the, the, my final question is, how do you work with other internal teams and really work across different departments to overcome these challenges? So explaining how I had to use jelly babies and beer cans to train engineers around controls and um, control failures. Um, yeah, that would take far longer than we've got right here. <laughs> so what I can say is that none of it has been about technical compliance. And in fact, the more technical and compliancy one is, the less accepting the audience becomes. So it's about communication. And there's a great book. There's no technical compliance in it, but there's a book out there by Kirsty Grant Hart. Okay. Um, it, yeah, called How to Be a Fabulous Compliance Officer. And it is about communication and it's, it's about humility. And yeah, it, it's about engaging with people who are nothing like you probably yeah. and accepting that you still need to make yourself understood. Um, and that might be about educating you, not educating them. 